as we're being like critical readers of the Bible, we're being serious students, we're, we're looking at different commentaries. Sometimes we'll come across comments um, and scholarship that maybe um, is difficult for us to understand how it weaves in with our Christian ideas. I'll give you an example, like, and you cover this in your book around authorship of, of Jude, for example, or even James, where there's questions, is this really the brother of Jesus? And, 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 you, and you do a really good job of kind of explaining different points of view on that. But when we come across like some of these difficulties where it's like, it's kind of jarring, like, wait a minute, I've always thought this is the brother of Jesus. And it seems like there's a lot of scholarship that says that. But there's also another group of scholars that say like, oh, it's probably not, probably written later. And we're trying to wrestle with our in our minds. And sometimes we can doubt. And I just wonder, like, advice as, as, a, as a Christian pastor, like how we kind of deal with those moments. Yeah, that's a great question, Mike. And I think sooner or later in our life of discipleship before Jesus, we're going to run into this kind of uh, issue uh, when we're reading scripture and we are believing what God is saying to us and we're receiving scripture as our authority. Uh, how do we encounter and deal with and work through difficult issues? I think the first thing I would say is just that God is not afraid of our questions and God is not afraid of critical scrutiny. Um, I, I, I love that about the Christian tradition. It has embraced academic engagement uh, from the beginning. Uh, in fact, I would argue a lot of uh, the current form of the academy has come from the, the, the kind of a Christian tradition uh, where we think that we can investigate the world because God really made the world and we can learn something about God if we investigate carefully all things around us. So what happens when we apply that to the Bible? I guess I would, I would encourage folks to not be afraid of engaging scholarship, not be afraid of engaging those hard questions. But at the same time, I think we always have to be alert to someone's worldview. Um, because uh, often you can pick up a commentary and you might hear someone say, well, all scholars think that that G uh, all scholars think that Peter did not re write Second Peter, and uh, this is just a foregone conclusion. This is a scholarly consensus, and uh, all the historical evidence points that way. Well, now hold on just a second. I mean, uh, uh, sometimes scholars can speak with way more confidence than they should speak, and I would want to say to a Christian, "Look, let's critically evaluate not only Scripture, but let's also critically evaluate what scholars say." Uh, let's look at the evidence that they're presenting for this slam dunk evidence or slam dunk argument that uh, Peter did not write Second Peter, um, and and so sometimes you're going to run into evidence that is troubling or difficult. Wow, you know, First Peter and Second Peter they don't look a lot alike when you start looking at the Greek and when you start looking at their style or their vocabulary. That there's a lot of differences. Can I think of some ways I might explain those differences? Yes. Uh, but then you come to, let me just put it on the table, the hardest difference between 1 Peter and 2 Peter is that 1 Peter uses the Old Testament as an authority. 1 Peter is quoting the Old Testament quite a bit. Scholarly assessment finds that 2 Peter only quotes the Old Testament once and then alludes to it only a few times. This discrepancy has led some to say the same author, the same person cannot be behind both of these texts because, for one, the Old Testament is an authority and it's the grounds upon which he makes his argument. And in the other, the Old Testament doesn't seem to be the central authority. So how can the same person be the author of both of these texts? That seems to be a really uh, difficult question to work through. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on these uh, texts for another project. And the more I look at Second Peter, the more I am kind of doubting scholarship when they say Second Peter is not referring to the Old Testament. Um, I'm, I'm more and more skeptical of that scholarly claim. Because, okay, Second, Second Peter doesn't quote the Old Testament just like First Peter does. But Second Peter has all kinds of allusions to the Old Testament. Um, is expecting a kind of framework of the Old Testament to be in the mind of the reader such that I, I'm not so sure 
it's such a hard question to work around to say, I, I think the author of Second Peter is actually relying on the Old Testament much more than scholarship um, usually, usually uh, you know, recognizes. And um, I don't know, maybe I could make a contribution here and say, hey, the, here's some evidence that Second Peter is actually using the Old Testament more than scholars say. So that takes a lot of work, though, Mike. And so how how much scholarly you know investigation does you know kind of the average Christian, someone who's trying to read and just understand the New Testament, how much do they need to do? I guess I'm trying to say, on one hand, don't be afraid of asking these hard questions. Be skeptical of the skeptics. <laughs> uh, but also, I just think there are really good resources, and I hope and pray this is a resource to introduce to folks in the church, here are some issues to think about. Uh, there are some historical issues that are uh, difficult that we need to work through, but here are some tools to work through them with, uh, all the while keeping you you know, grounded in the texts. Yeah, I guess I just want to land again on God is never afraid of our hard questions. And the text of scripture has been open to critical evaluation for a very long time. Um, and there are no, there are, there are no arguments that just uh, undermine the scriptures such that we should just pack up and, and go home. There are, there are difficulties to work through, but uh, I, I think, I think we can pursue this like faith seeking understanding. I think Anselm, you know, his little phrase there is really helpful. I have faith. I trust. I trust this scripture. I trust that God is speaking through this word, but I'm going to seek understanding. I'm going to, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to analyze. And when I bump into a problem, my first response isn't, oh, the whole thing is wrong. Instead, my first response is going to be, all right, Lord, I don't understand this. This is hard. I trust you. I'm listening. Um, I'm, I'm assuming there's a piece of information I don't have yet. So help me to keep working. That's, that's my disposition as I work as a scholar. Um, my, my, my first response is never to just question God's word. My first response is, okay, what do I not know? What, what more do I need to do to kind of inform myself, to learn about the debate? Um, and then are, should I be skeptical of the skeptics in this point? and evaluate their evidence. I, ho I hope there's something helpful in those comments there for folks. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video clip from the Delgado Podcast. To get more videos like this, simply subscribe here on YouTube. You can also download the full episode of each show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or your favorite podcast player. Take care.